This week on American Grindstone, we interview Mark Katrovsky, a filmmaker, a content creator, and at night when he gets off work, he roasts some really amazing coffee. Let's find out what motivates him and what a heart of gratitude can really do to drive your passion. On American Grindstone, Mark Katrovsky. The Grindstone. My sonny boy kept his nose to the grindstone. Never give up, never surrender. Mark, welcome to the show. Sean, thanks for having me. I'm pretty pumped about this. I'm really pumped about it, man. I, I've gotten to know you a lot this fall, um, and I think that you're a really fascinating dude. And I'm excited because you have your day job where you're making films or move, uh, you're making content for social media, including here at Travex, which we'll get into in a little while. But you have an incredible side hustle of making coffee, so I'm excited to kind of dive into that a little bit today. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where'd you grow up? Uh, grew up here in Whatcom County. So uh, born and raised out, actually out towards Baker, um, out in like around the Maple Falls area. Mm-hmm. So pretty, pretty small, like r- literally living in the mountains. Yes. Um, and I mean, I still live in Whatcom County. I just more live now in Bellingham, which is more a little bit of a city for those of you who don't know. Uh, but every time I drive back there, I'm like, oh my gosh, I grew up in like... <laughs> Almost like Lord of the Rings, like there's yes, like the yeah. Shire, you know, like you live yes. in the hills and stuff. So it's 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 kind of neat. If so the, if yeah. the Shire had meth labs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so true. I've been up there. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, before before the time, yes. um, it was it was much better. Now, yeah, now it's it's not it's not it's not it's not a good place. More yeah, Bordor back back then, where yeah. everyone lived to be a hundred years old and had meth. Today's my hundred and fiftieth birthday. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> With all the meth. Yeah. 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 So back to the meth. I mean, coffee. Yeah. Back to you. So you grew up here, up in the mountains. Yep. Um, tell us about your family. Oh, man. Um, my parents immigrated from uh, the USSR to the Soviet Union. Um, and, uh, yeah, they moved here about, I think, now it's coming up on 30, 30 years almost. Wow. And, um, yeah, they grew up in a very immigrant family, have four siblings, so somewhat of a decent sized family um shared rooms with my siblings we were very close uh very humble immigrant you know upbringing mm-hmm. um but yeah it was uh it wasn't it wasn't the easiest life and uh but it was it was a good one and I'm super thankful for my parents and everything they've did they've done and the fact that they've moved and immigrated here t- so that I could have a freaking amazing life is uh, spectacular. So, um, yeah. Did they move here before communism fell in the USSR? So thirty yeah. years ago? Not yeah. yeah, not not too long before actually. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's wild. That's crazy. That's yeah. wild. Well, um, growing up in the the mountains and everything, what would you guys do for fun, like you and your siblings and family? Yeah. Um, honestly, uh, we love to, you know, walk around, hike, yeah, yeah. huge hiker. Um, we, I started snowboarding fairly early on. Um, we were, we were very outdoorsy. Like yeah. th- this might sound weird, you know, if there's somebody born after the two thousands listening to this, but like, uh, it was like, we lived in a small village with a bunch of other Russian, um, like Slavic immigrants and we just we were raised by the outdoors like mm. yeah. you like you went to school came back and you go out and you play and it's just all woods forest I love and that. like you play hiding go seek until midnight 1 a.m mm. like it was just the dream childhood like i would never trade that for whatever kids grow up with right now and no no offense you know yeah. but but damn, like when you're, you know, growing up and you're used to, you know, dirt under your fingernails and yeah. freaking falling off, you know, a tree and, you know, walking home crying and sobbing because yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> a tree limb broke. And 100%. Like it's, it's so, it was such an experience. Um, and I think it's taught me a lot, but it was, it was a good childhood though. Yeah. That's amazing. Do you have any uh, uh, scars or stitches from... Playing in the woods as a kid? Uh, thank God, no scars, no stitches. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I wasn't. I wasn't that wild. I was more on the cautious side of all my crazy friends, but still, yeah, uh, it's crazier than what we have right now. So, I know that uh, have met you through Sean and working here with Trayvax. I know that you do a lot of your own videography and you are uh, your own um, 
uh, well, you get hired to do videography. Right. Does it talk to me about that. How, how does that passion come up as uh, maybe a young kid or when you get into that? Like, how does that come about? A hundred percent. Um, I think from uh, speaking of like the very tight knit community that I grew up in, mm-hmm. every, it was it was a very cultural thing for parents to push their kids to start learning instruments, um, playing piano, keys. So I play guitar and piano nice. um and that was because like i saw all my friends doing it and i was like oh i guess i'll join in because everybody's doing it um and so that happened and then all, a lot of people were getting into uh taking photos and i was like man i don't want to do this it's kind of eh, it's just yeah. another thing to learn but i finally got you know peer pressured into it and i was like hold up i kind of like this and while everybody was doing photos i was like this video thing's kind of cool and that was before like like the, the fact that you can film shoot a video at home was like yeah. like on a decent camera was revolutionary like oh, yeah. like my dad still had the handy cam you know mm-hmm. with the it was really bad but yeah that was um and that was back when i started having a iphone 3gs back then oh, so yeah. that was like an old generation so you're shooting you know videos on you know, 720p <laughs> pixel. <Yeah. laughs> but yeah. back then, you're like, this is dope. Yeah, oh, back yeah. then, it was like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You're Spielberg at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty really. much, pretty much. Uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of where it started. And then um, over time, I was like, maybe this might this might work. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, some time passed. And uh, I was actually, I just moved back from Portland. Um, I lived out there for maybe like a year and a half or so. And literally applied to McDonald's, applied to... Um, Starbucks, all the fast food places, everywhere. Yeah. Nobody gave me an interview. That's mm. crazy. And I was like, "This sucks." Yeah. Like how how am I gonna? I I literally cannot find a job. Yeah. And that was when I was like, maybe I can just do it myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I built out of necessity where you're like, yeah. well, I gotta work, man. Yeah. Like, and and of course, I grew up once again. I grew up in an immigrant family where you did everything yourself because you were at a disadvantage everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, your parents couldn't speak English. You, you know, you didn't have an education, so you had to manual labor your way through. Um, I mean, my dad had like a nine to five and then like worked night shift, woke up, went, did his side hustle, came back, had a meal, went to night shift, woke up, went to his literally that's wow. that was grind. literally like all my life grind. and he just take me to a side hustle and i'm just like a kid just yeah. sitting around and so all of that put together so back going back to your question all that meshed together and yeah. i was like let's just see if like this this works let's give so, it a yeah. shot and of course i loved it too so yeah. what's you the w- first gig you get though sorry to interrupt yeah. what's the first gig you get for that though yeah um the first gig ever was uh um I had a friend whose sister was getting married mm-hmm. and she's like, she doesn't have a budget or anything. And I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> F- free work was we the, is the that. grind is yeah. the grind. So for all you f- people out there trying to build a side hustle, the free work is where it's at. Yeah. Where it starts. Yeah. It's the good stuff. And so I shot my first wedding and from there on it was. Yeah. And just game over. perfecting it, perfecting it, perfecting yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And pe- people were like, oh, you do this thing? I'm like, I, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing one, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one thing led to another, and yeah, it's been a journey since. How long have you been doing that now? Uh, Maybe like nine, eight, eight nine years. Yeah. So it's been, it's, been a, it's been a minute. Yeah. And now you do, you do still do weddings, because I don't know any good good videographer, DJ, anybody else that in this line of work that doesn't do that <laughs> stuff to kind of... Yeah, yeah, put the b- fat on the bacon, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but what else are you doing? Yeah. So weddings have taken a much. I, I do that a lot less. Still do it occasionally, but now I help brands essentially communicate to their audience in a very relevant and consumable way. Um, that's actually enjoyable to to watch and to listen to, because mm-hmm. um, I've noticed like a lot of brands. First off, they suck at social media. They don't know how to create content, and I was like, I can show up. I can create content, and people might actually enjoy mm-hmm. hearing what you have to say yeah. in a very relevant way. And so I was like, well, I'm going to start creating the content for that. And I was like, wait up. They also don't know how to manage it. Mm. So I was like, now I can now I can help manage yep. the socials and create the content. And then when you pair them together, I think it can be really powerful. So that's kind of where a lot of my work has drifted off to. Um, I also do like one-off projects, um, you know, 
business shows up is like, hey, I need a video explaining this or, you know, showcasing yeah. whatever we do. So, yeah. That's got to be difficult, too, because you're creating content and it's so ever changing, as I'm sure you know, like the content that's uh, that's always put on Instagram or TikTok or what have you. It's always evolving. So you're constantly kind of changing with that as well, huh? hundred yeah. percent. It's uh, <clears throat> there's like two, 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 two streams of thought here where kind of like before the show, we were chatting about like the story arc. Mm -hmm. The yeah. story arc is kind of remains the same for thousands of years. Like we, the way we tell stories is pretty, pretty similar, yeah. but how we do that and through the mediums that we do that, like 60 years ago is the newspaper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today it's like a social media post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's the storytelling still stays the same. But the means yeah. and how we do that, and yeah, it's uh. So it's how you ingest that story. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, of course it's a head fully like you're keeping track of like algorithms now and AI yeah. and mm -hmm. how different pl TikTok works like this, Instagram works like this, and you kind of have to manage it. Also, it's 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 a head full, but I love it. Yeah, gosh, that sounds so. I would love to get to knowing about that because like there's always you always hear like, all right, between like 10 and four, if you post something on Instagram, like it's more likely like the, all the math that goes into sure, that. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. just fascinates for me, real, especially with something so new. It's all yeah. fake. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a matrix. <laughs> well, Ones it's, and zeros, It's guys. neat because uh, I've had the chance at Travex here to work with Mark uh, mm -hmm. over the last few months. And originally it was, you came on board, you were doing some shooting, but I didn't really even know you walking around the shop here. But then we got to do the big talent side video that we just launched. Yeah. And uh, you came out and shot that. You did a fantastic job. Dude, amazing um, job. It's gone viral to like 500 people so far. So we're really excited about that. <laughs> um, but also the most watched content on our channels has been Micah produced this fall. Yeah. Um, our, our most watched. And now, granted, they all have me in it. So it's probably a factor. But uh, <laughs> no, but really like it's funny because I, I come from an old school of video. I. You know, I did a lot of video in high school and in college and stuff, and it was all, and it was all flash, right? And it oh, was yeah. all like about the effects and all this because that was all so new to the common user. Yeah. And Micah gives me crap that like I I make videos like a forty year old dad, which I am, and so <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I've learned so much already working with Mark because I think one of the things that Mark has done is simplified what it is that communicates and is effective. Yeah. And it's through the lens that you see everything, no pun intended, um, that really, I think, brings a depth to what we're trying to build here. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> man. Right. Thanks for not sucking. Yeah. yeah. Um, thanks for yeah. doing good at your job. But, like, honestly, though, truly, though, thanks for doing good at your job, though. I mean, that's that's hard to ask for these days sometimes, I must say. Yeah. Do you, what what keeps you going or what gets you excited about about your main job, this work. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just love it. I, I love, I love the, the problem solving. I love the, you know, when, you know, sometimes things don't go as, as planned or things like just the, I guess I, I don't want to use the word the grind cause it's, I feel like it's just overused, but that's, <laughs> yeah. but, but it, it is like, I just, I just love to wake up and just be like, Dang, I get to freaking make videos, yeah. which was a dream for me. Like mm -hmm. back in the day, like 10 years ago when I was just starting off, I was like, if all, like I used to dream, like if literally me, if somebody showed what I do right now, yeah. 10 years ago, I would have been like, I did it. How? how? Yeah. I don't think this is possible. Yeah. yeah. And so when you wake up every day and you're just grateful for the opportunity to freaking have a shot at doing this yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, peop, like people have it so much worse around around the world. Yeah. <clears throat> and I get to wake up and follow my dreams. So I know it's like, th that's crazy, you guys. It yeah. doesn't exist in the world. Yeah. And when I get to wake up and say, I'm going to go shoot freaking cool videos with Tal and Sai and yeah. whatever. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to be pumped. Of course, it's not always yeah. easy, mm -hmm. but it's like this is the dream yeah. i mean it's incredible i'm done <laughs> <laughs> but no it's true, it's true i'm constantly telling that to my boys too like just the fact that you wake up and you can take a breath and you can choose to go to the bathroom right when you get up or grab breakfast or do whatever like a lot of people don't get that eat that choice even mm -hmm. so like don't take any moment for granted you know it's beautiful yeah D yeah going going very i'm just gonna uh, quick side note on that absolutely going very very like doubling down on that is mm -hmm. that 
like I get it. I'm, I'm, I would assume, I would think that I'm living the dream. Mm -hmm. But even if you're not, even if you're like listening to this and you're like working at McDonald's or whatever, there's nothing bad about that. But the fact that you can wake up in the United States and have an opportunity to yeah. freaking grind, mm -hmm. work, to learn, to grow, have an opportunity, like, holy cats, like, yeah. Yeah. that's amazing. The way, the fact that if you're like standing in your two feet, you're, you're decently healthy is amazing. Yep. Yeah. And you get to work for your family. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I love that. Well, and for you, coming from an immigrant background, especially in somewhere as oppressive as mm. the former Soviet Union, 100%. Yeah. you gain, a, you had come with a different perspective on that, right? I mean, your parents didn't get to choose their jobs per se. They yes. didn't get to choose their career paths. A lot of times they didn't get to choose how they spent their days, you know? The lineage of that, really. 100%. I am, despite <clears throat> the challenges that I grew up with, um, I'm so thankful. I would not want to have it any other way because I... I literally think that this mentality, the extreme thankfulness that I feel every day waking up for work mm -hmm. is because I saw my dad, literally, you guys, I'm not kidding you, went to his day job, worked all night, came home at 4 a.m., woke up at 10, went to another site. Like, like we grew up re really, like, not having anything. And the fact that I can, like, wake up and now choose to do what I do when yeah. my dad was like, dude, can somebody just pay me? Because yeah. I can work, I can work my ass off. I can hustle my way through. I don't know how to speak English. I, you know, don't have any yeah. education. Can, like going from that mm -hmm. to, like I'm waking up every every day and I get to do my dream yeah. job. Yeah. Come on. And yeah. I'm sure this he was is, probably pretty positive too. What's up? Well, he was probably a pretty positive guy as well. Huh? Oh. My my dad is yeah yeah he's he's an optimist right he's he's like he's very positive even yeah I'm I <laughs> there's there's so much that I'm so thankful for okay. um he's he wasn't perfect you know sure. parents all have you know their own downfalls and upsides but I'm so thankful for just his like there's a way you can do this if you freaking work hard if you go at it mm -hmm. if you try mm -hmm. there's an opportunity and you go until you win yeah. That, I, I I didn't build that in myself. Yeah. That was just my dad, what I saw my dad do. Yeah. Instilling I mean, that in you. Yeah, what I love to see about, about your story so far, Mark, is, you know, coming from an immigrant family who's working very hard to get by. So you grew up kind of this idea of, like, duty, responsibility, and, and hard work. But also because of the creativity that you get from playing in the woods. I, it's how I grew up, right? Like yes. you create all these worlds and all these things well into your 20s. And uh, what I loved about what I love about that is that that creativity starts to blossom, you know, through the music and things that you're doing to put you in a place now where, yeah, you can work hard, but also work hard at something that you love, which is something that very few people get to do for a nine, yeah. nine to five job. Now, on top of that, you have an incredible side hustle making coffee. And this is the thing that kind of really stood out to me. And uh, now having consumed a bag and a half of your coffee <laughs> myself, uh, I just eat the beans. I don't drink it. <laughs> yeah. um, That's I the way you're supposed to. Yeah, I snorted it, it once because I wanted to just try, you know. Um, were, you, were you okay? Straight yeah, it was good, man. Things? Yeah, I, I saw things. <laughs> just railing beans, no big deal. <laughs> yeah. what, I, what I love about it is that you now make an incredible coffee. And so I want to kind of get into that a little bit. And I want to know, you know, how old were you when you started drinking coffee and how did that turn into this empire that you're building? I hope you say like, I was two years old. <laughs> two years old <laughs> drinking coffee. I was jacked. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I wish, I wish. No, my, um, I, I grew up in, you know, uh, a Slavic family and we drank a lot of tea. Yeah. Tea was our better bread and butter. But I mean, I I just grew up drinking, you know, my my parents's you know, Nescafe, Folgers, Taster's Choice. My dad still drinks Taster's Choice. I'm like, "Dad, listen, your your son runs like a really <laughs> I can give you all the free coffee, world-class <laughs> coffee yes. for probably a cheaper price than what you're paying paying for that Taster's Choice." He's like, "Oh, but it, you know, it tastes good." Like, uh, so flavor crystals. It's yeah. tradition now. It's, yeah, tradition. it's tradition. Yeah. So uh 
yeah, I grew up drinking that for a long time, and I was like, I don't really, I don't get why adults like this. This is pretty bad. This is terrible. Yeah, it's and you're terrible. like dumping like half and half in there and sugars and creams and stuff like that. And then I moved out to Portland, um, lived there for a little bit, and there was a, a cafe that I used to visit to visit on my way to um, a school that I was attending and helping at, and um, I just became really good friends with the staff there. It was a regular, mm-hmm. and then they kind of just, you know pushed me a little bit into drinking, mm-hmm. you know, smaller beverages, a little more coffee yeah. focused. And I remember when the barista was like, hey, like we have, I, you should try cappuccino. It's a little less milk. Uh, you're going to get a little more of the coffee flavor and you might like it. And I tried it and I was like, wait, this, li- there's no flavoring in this? Huh. Like what? Yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, that's just, it's just coffee. I'm like, wait, coffee can taste this good yeah. <laughs> that, that, like that was insane i was like what have i been drinking all my life listen yeah. my you yeah. know my parents were great but they've done a few things wrong they didn't introduce me to amazing coffee <laughs> <laughs> a major disservice yeah. to me yeah. Yeah. yeah um and so from there on i was like i I just need to i dove into it i was like i need to learn more about this yeah um and so that 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 kind of spiraled out of control <laughs> yeah i love it i love also like in moments like that it could be something that's so simple as just trying it and loving that first like really good cup of coffee you got and then it just unfolds everything mm-hmm. I love perpetuates that. The yeah, passion. yeah yeah would it, it <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna i was gonna throw out a drug reference and i'm like no, we've had enough of this <laughs> yeah, do it yeah, well we're gonna snort beans later on the table we're gonna do a taste test we're doing it up at baker though yeah, and yeah, yeah else. absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah up with everyone else mark when you uh what what is the thing that like when you think about coffee as a whole, what is the thing that just draws you in, or what? Where do you find yourself to be more passionate? Is it the the growing process, the mm. refinement process, the you know what? What about it stands out to you? Um, right now, I'd probably say I think it is exactly kind of like what we do at Mirror Coffee Roasters is we literally look for spectacular coffees around the world, bring them in, roast them to hopefully like a really, really high quality that expresses the coffee really, really well. And then we I get to sell it to friends and family and yeah. people. And, you know, like we, we have a podcast. We're passionate about coffee and stuff. And the amount of people that we've met through this journey, through this craft of coffee, through like really incredible this incredible beverage that actually takes so much work yeah. from the farm level to literally your morning Joe that you probably don't even think about and you're just downing it takes a lot of work. And then for us to be in that process and doing it really exceptionally and building like relationships and friendships through that. Psh, come on. Yeah. Now you're living the dream, right? right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's that I, I love it. It's, it's the craft, you know, like, um, like building, and creating something really beautiful that other people can enjoy. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. So how does that, um, you said the, the the name of your company is Mir? Yeah. Mir Coffee. How does something like that like start? Like from concept to like, boom, here we are. Here's the name. Let's get it. Yeah, because most people are going to just drink coffee and never think about going beyond maybe just grinding the beans at home in the morning. Legit, yeah. So I what, d- that's me. What did it look like for you to start? making roasting your own coffee Mm -hmm. yeah for sure um well after this you know coffee enlightened that you can say that i had Mm. moved back to bellingham and uh first thing i knew was i need to go get a job for coffee roastery or some kind of coffee company so i can just learn get firsthand hands-on experience and uh got a job at you know the local like woods coffee roastery um and worked uh, under this guy named Shay, who is, he is so knowledgeable, one of the most knowledgeable people about coffee in, you know, in our town, over way overqualified for his position. Yeah. But man, I worked there maybe 15 hours a week. And every time he was in the building, I would ask him questions, mm. just pester him. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Why, why does this change? Just trying to soak in as much information. Yeah. And at this time, actually, my brother, who was living on the East Coast, was having a similar, like, coffee, like, eye-opener. He's like, oh, dang, this coffee thing is actually tasty. Oh, that's awesome. Um, that's and we crazy. jumped on a I phone. Yeah, we jumped on a phone call one day, and he's like, hey, I've just been getting into coffee. And I'm like, wait, 
You too. <laughs> this is crazy. You grab your mug. All right, let's talk about yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, think, I think we can work something what out. You drink here. it. What yeah. you drink it? So he he moved back to this um, to Washington finally, and we've been talking about starting something. Yeah. And at the time, the ca- the cafe that I was working at went out of business, and I was like, well, I don't have a coffee job now. My brother's back living in our hometown. Yeah, let's just freaking go for it. And wow, see what happens. Yeah. Good for you, man. And Good for you. We're, he's he's worked at a, at multiple cafes in Florida. I have a little bit of experience, a little less than him. And we're just like, let's just let's just see what happens. And if it hey, if it fails, big whoop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Screw it. At least you tried. Yeah, you at least I tried. I would have I would have yeah. been frustrated with myself. I think ten years down the line, been like, man, but what if we did? Like, what if? A thousand percent. Man. And I'm like, no, I c- I can't do that. So we went and started figuring out, um, starting a roastery is kind of basic. Not, it's not like we don't have like a coffee shop. People don't come in. Sure. We're just like a roasting space. Um, it's pretty, pretty, pretty easy for the most part. And did uh, you did you start with like a little coffee roasting tumbler roaster in your garage? Like walk oh no. me through like the early days yeah. of like you're working for Shea, and I've seen the Woods Roastery. It's quite an operation that they got there, right? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And they put as much work into the aesthetics as into the equipment that gets yeah. it done. And it's, an, it's a great experience. So you, you're working there, but like, and you're, are you, you're roasting and you're bagging. But like, for you guys personally, like, where you're like, we're just going to play around at home for a while. Like, what was the little steps that kind of got you to? Yeah, so uh, my brother had some roasting experience on the East Coast. And we we're like, hey, if we're going to do this, let's do this. And we want to do exceptional stuff. And yeah. so we're like, we're not going to go lightly on this. So we literally went and bought like a, 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 an in, like a full-on industrial massive 12-kilogram roaster. This thing's like the real deal. It's not like a, like a stovetop or anything. Yeah. And so we're like, we're just going fi- to figure this out and we're going to do it. Yeah. And so, yeah, we just, we just literally went out and, <laughs> and did it. I, I don't it. know. I, I I feel like I'm missing something, but I'm like, no, yeah. that, that's no, no. I, I, like, I love the the confidence to just jump into it and do something like that because for someone like me, will overanalyze, overthink, and do it. I like it will take me like two years to actually like jump into it. But I love the love and passion that you were just like, yep, we'll do it. Because if we don't now, we never will. Listen, I, I don't love know that. if it's if it was confidence or foolishness. Absolutely. <laughs> either way, either way, it's, it's a combination it's, it's of both. Beautiful. Always, right? <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the day that the roaster showed up. You oh. guys, it shows up in the mail or on a truck. It's probably on a truck. It's pretty big. Yeah. What What is going through your head? You're unpacking this thing. You're setting it up. I think that that's when it felt real. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, I don't like, it's all just paperwork until then. And, and then when you have this massive thing show up, I was like, this is, oh, this is happening. Tangible. <laughs> like yeah. Touch, yeah. Touch yeah. And so yeah. I remember, I mean, we documented everything um, and I'm pumped to look back at that footage like yeah. in 10 years but yeah just unwrapping it it was all you know perfectly packaged in a giant crate and it was unreal it was surreal it was um words just can't can't explain oh, i love that mm. it's yeah how long did it take you guys to kind of find the blend or the batch that you are rolling like when you first felt confident to roll something out um it didn't take t- take a whole lot um Granted, I wouldn't say now with what we're doing now, I wouldn't say that was like the best yeah. um, thing, but it was a, it was definitely, I would say it was definitely better than, you know, your, like I need to, I need Taster's to be careful, choice. Be careful yeah. what I say. <laughs> it's better than <laughs> yeah. Taster's Choice. Yeah, let, let's yeah, just say yeah. that. Let's yeah. just say that. No offense. Like if you're drinking Taster's Choice, hey. Oh, they're I, I think sue I, you <laughs> now, Taster's <laughs> Choice. Uh, I think like the best cup of coffee is the one you love. So if you love it, great. Yeah. That's all yeah. that matters. Um, But yeah, so we uh we we I think it took us like a month before after um you know maybe two months after we set up the machine mm-hmm. to like all right, we have a bag of coffee. This is what we're releasing. Yeah. Um so yeah. Now do you go to cash and carry for that? Where do you go get your beans? Like how does that work? <laughs> yeah, um so uh it's a very international like global process. So mm-hmm. you're working with companies that export coffee out of countries that import coffee into into the states yeah um and then you work with them on finding the coffee that works with you so uh oftentimes it can be a tedious process because 
you know, for some context, we're like a, like sommeliers in wine. That's kind of what we deal with. Mm-hmm. It's very it. high scoring. It's very, you know, exact, detailed. Like everything needs to be tasting up to par, up to score level. And so um, we can, you know, we can start searching for uh, sam. We we essentially we we order samples from these importers, and they'll send us what what they have. Yeah. Um, and then we'll. Uh, roast up a little bit and then we'll taste and so we can taste 10 15 20 30 40 coffees before we land on one uh-huh. oh, wow and uh and we're just looking for something that fits our quality level and once once we find it we roast it up and then once that's sold out we go back to the drawing board yeah. and what are you looking for in in coffee quality isn't it all the same <laughs> <laughs> i know it's not but i'm just <laughs> oh boy <laughs> Yeah, um, we're looking for a number of things. So we're looking for um, uh, acidity in the coffee, sweetness in the coffee, yeah. complexity. Um, we're looking for how the coffee sits in your palate. Um, does it taste good from hot to cool? Um, awesome. It's th- everything from the aromas to, um, yeah, just... Uh, what kind of fl- what flavor profile is it like? Mm-hmm. Are we talking something that's very delicate, fruity, um, complex, or is it just chocolate? And yeah. there are coffees that are just chocolate, which yeah. is going to be more simple. Mm-hmm. Not to say that they're bad coffees, uh, but they just probably won't be scored as high as some of the coffees that are very nuanced and yeah. Yeah. Um, you know have a lot of dimension to them. Speaking of coffee. Before we get into more questions, I mean, you brought we brought you brought your coffee stuff here. Yes, and I feel like before we dive in more, I want to drink some of this coffee. I want to drink some so bad. Like okay. I'm excited for one to get all percolated on coffee, and two to try it. I, I may be I may overhyped it, so bring down your your expectations. The expectations. <laughs> I cannot. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say the expectations start at flavor crystals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's our baseline. Yeah. And then we'll build up. What did you What did you bring here today? So um, yeah, I brought you know a small little pour over brewer. Um, my kettle. It's gonna get a little nerdy. I have a scale. Um, just like cooking, awesome. you need to make sure how much salt you're putting in there, how much, mm-hmm. you know, all the stuff. Yeah. Same with coffee. Um, and uh, So can we get yeah. everything set up and you kind of talk us through, yeah, like, for sure. what yeah. makes a good cup of coffee and how you do it? This is exciting. I'm like. I am I love. I mean, we showing. live in, like, the coffee capital of the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I feel like this is such a curated experience all of a sudden. It's, I feel like, yeah, you got to pay top dollar. Look, it's like hand this. stuff going on here. It's, oh, yeah. It's amazing. I'm just, I'm nerdily excited about this. This is like when you see like people, you know, cooking in front of you. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. you got to learn like slide of hand. Absolutely. This is real close up magic. So tell us what we're, tell us what we got. We want to smell it too. Okay. There you go. Pass it around. Um, this is a, this is a Guatemalan coffee. Um, a coffee we haven't. It's just like the stuff I used to snort. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Guatemalan <laughs> coffee. Uh, it hasn't been released yet. And it will be in the next week or so. Um, but yeah, so it's it's great. I love it. I'm That's a fan. Great. It's a lighter roast. It's yes, it's a lighter roast for it's sure. Got um, got a lot of kind of like citrusy smells to it. Definitely. Yeah, I'm excited. I like your brand too. Thank you. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Reflect what's good. <laughs> Reflect what's good. Yeah, you want to sniff? Here, just give the viewers a sniff, would you? <laughs> Take a little sniff of that. All right, we got the viewers involved. I love it. So this is eight ounces. I like how I, I watched you do the whole thing as if like I was gonna see someone. Sit <laughs> <up>. <laughs> oh Look it. Oh, he did it. <laughs> so tell us about where you got this coffee from. Yeah, so this coffee comes from um, Guatemala, Guatemala, uh, in the region of Huehuetenango, um, which is deep in deep in Guatemala. Um, I was actually there, went to the farm last February. Uh, we've been partnering with this family for now four harvests. Um, they are just spectacular, just yeah. entrepreneurs. Um, like really cool, easygoing people invited me into their home. We had like shared like one of their like traditional beverages together. Wow. They toured me around their farm, um, kind of everything they do. They were extremely 
grateful for me buying the coffee, but also yeah. I was also very grateful for them growing like a really spectacular coffee. And so it was just this like mutual, like, dude, we're just in this together. Yeah. We live in completely opposite sides of the world, mm-hmm. uh, very different people, but we're still evolving around this beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, hopefully that, you know, people like you guys can just in- drink it at home. So, um, yeah, so comes I love that you were saying that though, like you were saying how this is like grown into passions where you've met people and done this. And I, I'm not just now realizing why you say that the extent of that, that you've actually gone down there and you're, you're traveling and going to the places where this is all sourced is fantastic. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people, I mean, this just gets into, you know, a rabbit trail of my ick with, you know, all the marketing terms. And this happens in every industry where they're like, oh, it's like fair trade and all this stuff, mm. dude. That's usually the BS. Like mm. a lot of people are getting like severely like underpaid. Yeah. Um, it's very unsustainable. Like they like show these like stock footage of like coffee farms and you're like, dude, you weren't there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on, you don't care. Like, you got just, that off shutter stock. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's just <laughs> like, or, or it's just like mass produced, you know. Yeah. And it may sound like we're doing the same thing and g- sure, but um, like a lot of like, it's like a white guy that just shows up, shakes a hand, they get a photo and they leave. And we hope not to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, we've been just partnering with this family for again, like four harvests. Um, and hopefully we'll be growing together for good, but yeah. I love that. Like, yeah, I think it's so, great. So yeah, I brought my grinder. Um, I could have grinded this outside of the podcast, but grinding fresh is always, yeah, it's way so more fun. I, I want to hear it too. Yeah. So this is a, this is a hand grinder. It's really nice, but, uh, now, this ahead. this uh, if you're thinking about something for me for Do Christmas, it. I want to just let you know that we're looking <laughs> at it right now. You have it in your hands. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Trayvax okay. branded. Yeah, we want a Trayvax branded. Wait, wait. Coffee grinder. What was that? <laughs> Trayvax. Are we making? Oh, uh, never mind. We're, we're making something. Oh, are we? Are we going to start manufacturing? Gr- no. I would love that. Wouldn't that be fun? Cut that, Michael. Cut that. <laughs> can we make it out of leather and steel? Because if we can. <laughs> A leather coffee grinder? That would be the next evolution. That would be. <laughs> now, how do, you, how do you know how long to gr- be turning that thing for? So I, that's what the scale is for. So I dosed out already 18 grams of coffee. Okay. Um, and so once you'll hear it, um, there'll just be no coffee in the chamber left, and then you'll get a so, grinder oh, bottom. It'll be yeah. quieter. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going down below. So do you set, do. like, the thickness of its cutting? Yes, yes. So I said I set that right before the podcast. Yeah. Um. So it's it's a perfect grind setting specifically for this coffee, um. So that it tastes good. I love so that. Hopefully. Do you ever just hold that thing above your head and spin it around like a party favor? Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah, that's what I feel like. Let's let, let's all sing Old Lang Old Lang Slang. <laughs> nope, we're not we're not doing that one. No, nope. that's not a song. <laughs> that's not a real old, song. Old Lang Slang. Old Lang Slang is not one. No. You guys want to give that give yes. this a smell? Sean, you're you you have a little you have a little bit of a um like you're you kind of have a nose for things, right? I'm you, getting you it. You like you like the Oh, not, I mean, but you're, not me. You're, you're, well, look at I, this no, schnoz. No, 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 no. Why I say this is because of the cigar stuff and I yeah. know we clicked on with that, you know, a month or two back. Yep. But oh, so you guys are clicking now. I get it. Okay, it's fine. Continue. Dude, dude. Sorry. <laughs> it is. I I I love the nuance of Yeah. Of this stuff, and I love learning about crops and 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 what makes it rich and yeah. So with cigars, this has always been something I've really enjoyed is mm-hmm. is gaining the nuance from it, and same with coffee. Yeah, so kind of taking it down to its simple ingredients there. Mm-hmm. Does it smell different than what you guys have at home? Uh, I'm just curious. Absolutely. I, I've been doing a curing for like years now, which is <laughs> I, I know, I know, <laughs> I knew it was gonna break your heart, but I was just gonna let you listen, know. I, we're it, French pressing now. Listen, it and does, I really want to have some. It breaks stuff. my heart only because I know what that tastes like. And I know you it have too. it every day. And I so know I, it. it's for you, not for me. Yeah. 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 So um Bear King Grind, so it's sponsored by Keurig. No. <laughs> Not anymore, no. If you're, before Keurig sponsors you guys, I will sponsor you guys. There you go, there you go. It was a joke. So I I use a bun coffee maker for my everyday coffee. Excellent. But um, my favorite is the Bialetti Italian coffee okay. roasters. Yeah. And that's what I use your coffee in. And that's nice. like my Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday when I have a longer morning. Yeah. I'll make that up because it's a finer coffee so i'll make that up so i can taste it and i'll run it through the bialetti on my stove and 
let kind of fill the house a little bit and I'm not rushing my, my cup out the door. Right. So of course, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Okay. So you zeroed it out. You filled it with the, yeah, I have some water boiling. I'm going to go get that. Okay. And a Bialetti, this is, you were explaining this to me on our way here because Mm -hmm. I do the French press. Yeah. Bialetti is the Italian version. Yeah. So you fill water in a base of like a, an aluminum Mm -hmm. uh, carafe and then it's got like a filter with the coffee in the middle. Gotcha. And then it's got the, it's got your pitcher on the top. And so the water filters up through the bottom. I think I've seen coffee. this before. Yep, yeah. It comes out on top. So fun. Okay. So now you're measuring how much water to pour in. Yes. That's amazing. So right now we're starting with something we call uh, the bloom. So that just, that wets, that wets the grounds um, and gives the grounds some time to breathe. Mm-hmm. Um in but other words, there's there's gases trapped in the coffee okay. from the roasting process, and we're just letting those things escape a little bit. Get them um, out of there, and because uh, they're not they're not quite the best huh. tasting. But uh, um, yeah, so we're just gonna let this sit for 45 seconds. We have about 10 seconds left, and then I'll uh, wrap up. You know, so the rest you're, of the coffee. Wow, you're o- so you're opening up the flavor. Yes, yes. Okay, Alrighty, there it is. And uh, then now we're uh, we're gonna do two more pours, um, and then. Wait till it till it draws down. We're doing about a uh, one to sixteen and a half ratio. So for one gram of co- uh, whoops, can't multitask. One gram of coffee to sixteen grams of water, okay. or sixteen milliliters of water. Um, for those who are like, you don't measure water in grams. Yes, well, it's, it's the same. Uh, gr- one gram is one milliliter of water. Mm. So I'm still perplexed why we didn't. Go to the metric system. I'm yeah. constantly asking Alexa all these questions. By the mm-hmm. way, yes. I'm also wondering wh- why Mark decided to pour his cup first. What hey, a jerk! Well, come on, no. <laughs> He's like, I gotta get going. I gotta get going. You know, I would say all the Russian communities that I've spent time in, they usually serve their guests first, and yeah. then they serve <laughs> themselves. But He's that's s- actually that's actually true. It Sean, is true. Sean is very. That's that was profound. <laughs> I, I took two years of Russian in high school. You're like, except what? for me, baby, I'm taking and it back, baby. Yeah. It pretty much got me through college, yeah. my Russian language, and then I haven't used it in a long time now. But I grew up around a lot of Russians in, yeah. in my college years. Did you years. pick up the language and you, you, you say it? No, in high school, I had a, a foreign exchange student named Dmitri do all my homework for me. But in college, conversationally, yeah. our whole, like, a lot of the um, maintenance staff and stuff at the college I went to was was first generation immigrants yeah and because i knew russian i just took a lot of time to get to know them and i I built really neat relationship with a lot of them so i would love to have more time to to travel the world and 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 meet and and learn about new cultures that's like one of my that's one of the do's right Mm. and you i'm so stoked that you are getting to do that too that's so fantastic yeah Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite you know there's yeah. a lot of things that I love about my job, but the fact that I get to, you know, travel and visit these farms, visit these, you know, f- families and yeah. spend time with with very different culturally yeah. people mm-hmm. is like is is quite the experience. So And then have that common joy too, which is like that perk too of it. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Also it's let's nerd out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> we don't even can't even speak the same language, but we're like, dude, this coffee thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We sold Good. our we sold our souls for this whatever we call this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We went all in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all right. Wow. Can I get uh can I get another cup somewhere? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. I'm gonna go last. No, no, you go. I thought that's what's yours. You go. First. You go. No. Beauty okay. before age. Okay, I, I can't wait. So that thank you. I appreciate it. You're, I respect it. Would you mind just taking this? Yeah, no, yeah. No. Lovely. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. So the coffee, it's gonna start off hot. Yeah. Um, which is great, but usually as the coffee cools down, uh, a lot different. You're gonna be able to taste different flavors. Okay. So your palate is gonna taste best at room temperature. Which I'm not saying you mm. should be tasting that, but there that's the, there's a reason why you know we drink uh, sodas really really cold, um, and yeah, so a lot of things if they're really hot or really cold, we won't be able to taste a lot of the um, like it's harder for our palate to pick up flavors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I never knew that. Yeah, the 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 cool thing with coffee is you can drink it hot, and then as it you know, don't drink it all right when it's hot. Yeah. Let it cool down and enjoy the flavor progression. Mm. Um, I feel like so. I'm picking up like hints of star fruit 
apricot and yeah. like toffee. That's <laughs> what I feel like I'm picking up in this. Wow. But it also wow. says it on the bag. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! <laughs> no, that's uh, that. That's not the right label for this coffee. Curses! So, I'm not yeah. picking up star fruit. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there for a second. So I was like, what? I was like, Sean, is that you? <laughs> you nailed the other brand so well. <laughs> smells amazing. Yeah. It's funny because like I don't like cold coffee, but taking coffee at room temperature, I've never really thought to like that to be the ideal spot where coffee is enjoyed. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. It smells pretty light. Yeah, it is. It is light, but it's got like a, I don't know, a, a deep flavor to it, even after. Now, does it taste better strain through your mustache? <laughs> or is it, yeah. Um, yeah. or do you like part the mustache to get the no, full never. flavor? No, I'm like never. I'm like those fish, like the, the humpback whale. Oh, yeah. The krill that goes through the, the fine hairs there. Yes. And it's really just a fashion choice after that because yeah. I'm trying to dye this a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anything but it. red, it would be preferred. So. <laughs> Anything but red? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fitting for you, man. It's fitting. Yeah, well. I see. I would grow my hair out, and all the time when I was a younger kid, everyone would think I was my mom. So my whole life, they'd be mm. like, Terry. So, like, when you get to be like a 34 year old man, you're like, I don't like. I, honestly, I should stop growing it long. Let's be real. But uh, you have great hair. I don't uh, know why you would. <laughs> but I've always been like thought as my mom. So I'm like, this. If only the, I didn't have this orange hair. Yeah. No. They wanted. They'd stop thinking I was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> that's never happening. I that's think it was never. more your soft features. Yeah. Than, yeah. Than and that's what it really is. It's really my soft features and my femininity and your fair pro- <laughs> complexion. Yeah. yeah. The porcelain skin. And your fear of the sun. Let's talk more about me. This is wonderful. Coffee, me. Okay, so we've zeroed it out. This is great. Yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and do the do the same thing over we're again. We're gonna grind the coffee again. Grind the coffee. Can I grind the coffee this time? Oh yeah, please. Oh yes. Sean, this you're, thing's you're like, gonna love this. It's like an urban camouflage and it's called the Commandante. It's actually a really, really nice grinder. They're yeah. made in Germany. The burrs in there are really actually there's a little little, you know, fun fact. Out of all the gear that you can buy. Um, buying a good, good grinder is probably the most important thing. Really? Out of all your gears, yeah. Because how your how your grinder is going to cut down your your beans is going to play a, a big role in how the coffee is actually extracted mm-hmm. into your cup. So, huh? That's wild. Yeah, but this is a nice. It's like an outdoor outdoor grinder. It's so meant I just to turn it like this. Look at that. Sounds like a, it sounds like a grindstone. That's not like a grindstone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is so natural. Sorry, I did it. I did find that joke all that funny. Micah was doing something. Our producer Micah was making a funny face. Well, I, I wasn't thinking my joke was hilarious. No, you knows. can laugh at your own jokes, man. Oh, grindstone! I often like to think I'm the funniest person in the room, and to myself, I am. No, that's the truth. Yeah, Sean, you can pretty much call yourself a coffee connoisseur now. Yes. And what can I call myself, sir? <laughs> <laughs> so this is good <laughs> well, but, but really like what do you this like, is honestly you, truly you don't have to you don't oh i'm i'm it's okay. done yeah it's done i love that that's great it's whisper quiet <laughs> trying to do happy new, I was new thinking years was <laughs> but but really like like you, you can just be honest if it I'm, sucks I'm then it sucks i truly dude. love this and, and i'm not someone so i'm someone who keurigs and not by choice, by I the way, but has gotten used to yeah. Keurig and throws the creamer in, like you said, willy nilly in the morning, not even measuring that, getting out the door. This is fantastic. This doesn't need any creamer. And I'm not just saying that because you're here. This is absolutely lovely. I hope I, I hope not. I'm going to after the show, I'm going to pretend like I'm leaving, stand outside the door and be yes. like, <laughs> what, are, what are they really saying? <laughs> well, usually we'll let Micah record a I'll little like, bit. Did afterwards. he leave any? Okay. I'll be like, did he leave any? Because that's. That's what I'll be looking for. This is wonderful. That smells nice. It looks barky. It looks like sawdust. And the the flavor has been changing as it has been decreasing in heat too, which is I've never paid attention to that before. I'm 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 just new at all of this. I think it's my probably my favorite thing to pair with a cigar is oh, really yeah? good coffee. I can get that. I, I haven't that. had this coffee with a cigar because I don't have a lot of morning cigars right now, but 
Let's but do that after we after we cl- cut tonight. Yeah. Save a little bit. There we go. Look how, look how like tenderly he holds the lid on there. It's like. But I do like the I like the art of it too. I went to this place and um, uh, where was I? Hey guys, where was I? <laughs> where was I? Like? I went to Nashville, <laughs> and they just forever. <laughs> you like that? Sorry, <laughs> they were like scientists at yeah. the table, like letting it all go through all this glass, and it was fantastic to watch. Now, why is this pour is over the preferred method of most coffee guys when they're making their coffee? Yeah, so um, pour over is the preferred method simply because it gives you probably one of the most um, the most control over what your coffee is going to taste like. So okay. you can control the grind size. You can control how fast or slow your water's pouring. So if you really want to get nerdy, like we even in our very niche, crazy community, we even talk about like the, the flow rate, how fast you're pouring your water uh-huh. actually changes how the, how the coffee gets extracted, how much agitation you're causing on the coffee bed. Um, a lot of those weird things, you can even change how fast the water draws down, um, wow. st- stuff like that. So that's the good thing about a pour over as opposed to, you know, machines have been getting really good over time to make a black coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's nothing against machines, but you won't, you just won't get the same control that you do um, with mm-hmm. a pour over. And for us, we're trying to make the best cup of coffee and we need as much control as we can possibly get. So it's fantastic. This is the kind of stuff I I, I nerd out about. I want to yeah. like. These are these are the we we used to do only French press when we go camping. So it became this like really like you know out in the woods sitting by the fire making your French press coffee. I do the like I said earlier. I'm gonna say it again, but the tradition of it the the, the 15 minutes if you have in a day to do that. I just yeah. like the preparation. Yeah, I love that. Weird like that. That's what I like about my Saturdays, or you know, mm-hmm. when I can have a slower morning and you can really take time into the, the yeah. craft of it, right? Yeah. The preparation of it. It's fascinating. American Grindstone is brought to you by Travax, the ultimate gear for the modern adventurer. Whether you're hitting the trails, exploring the city, or just navigating everyday life, Travax has you covered. Here is the Contour. It's my own personal everyday carry. The Contour is Travax's sleek and durable wallet that is designed to be your EDC companion. Made from top grain leather and precision engineered metal, the Contour not only looks great, but is built to withstand whatever life throws at you. But that's not all. Travax also offers a wide range of rugged belts, their skeletonized field knife, and the ever popular OG 2.0, as well as other essentials that blend form and function seamlessly. Elevate your everyday carry with Travax, where style meets durability. Travax, earn your story. So, Mark, when you're making coffee, uh, what is the thing that kind of drives you for perfection? Like, why do you, why do you feel like you could always make a better cup? <laughs> yeah, um, honestly, that this is like with everything. My, you know, the roasting business, the video stuff. I honestly just go back to kind of where we started with this podcast episode is that I'm just, I'm just thankful that I get a shot. Like for real though, Mm -hmm. I I literally cannot put words to how thankful I am that I have a chance to just play the game. Mm -hmm. I have a chance to get at bat again. I have a chance to freaking just try and make a way. Like I, I'm, I'm ridiculous. Like lit. I I I have no words. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel extremely like I don't deserve this. This is an incredible opportunity. So why not wake up and freaking try to crush it every single day? Yep. Pursue excellence. Yeah. Go the extra mile. Try build w- everything. Yeah. Like I'm just so grateful because I've seen my dad do the unthinkable every single day for decades monotony yeah Yeah. and do it just for the sake of that hopefully his kids can have a better opportunity Mm -hmm. and that's me Mm -hmm. and i do have a better opportunity you do do the things you love and it's like i i owe it to him yeah Mm -hmm. like this is this is what it was this is what it was for 
And I'm extremely grateful that every day I can try to get better at roasting. Yeah. I can try to make a better video. I can try to work hard again. I can try to get through the ups and downs of life. Like yeah. life is <laughs> life is good. <laughs> <laughs> like, like even even when it sucks and it's hard and there's trust me, when you're running a business, when you're doing a lot of things, that does exist. But it's like we have it so much better than so many people in the world. It's like you're a mirror reflection. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Your dad in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah. In a lot of ways. hundred percent. Speaking of, where did the name come from? Mirror coffee. Yeah. So it came from the fact that inside of a DSLR camera, mm -hmm. there are a set of, a set of mirrors. So when you pull up the camera up to your face to look into the camera, mm -hmm. into the viewfinder, what you're actually seeing is light coming in through the lens, reflecting off of a handful of, small little mirrors and that's what you're seeing you're seeing literally a reflection and so my brother and i both come from like a photography video background and so when it came to like okay what what expresses us what yeah what communicates us mm -hmm. um and what do we actually want to do in the long term we're like mirror kind of sounds interesting i love that you know so it's that. like you're taking the stories like you were sharing earlier of this farmer family in guatemala mm -hmm. And you're bringing up their story that we can enjoy here in Bellingham, Washington. A hundred percent. And and literally taste the earth that they harvested this coffee from. Yeah, literally. This is, you know, a story of its own. Yeah. Like, and I know many people don't, I'm not going to, you know, overthink this every single morning, but a Guatemalan coffee is not going to taste like an Ethiopian coffee not going to taste like an Indonesian coffee. Yeah. So literally there's some storytelling aspects. Like when you taste a Guatemalan coffee, I could probably blind, blindly call out a Guatemalan coffee. Mm. Yeah. And that's because it has a set of characteristics that are just unique yeah. to it. Yeah. Uh, Ryan can do that with the Keurig. He can tell you what a Green Mountain coffee is <laughs> yeah, yeah. and what a Dunkin' Donuts Keurig is. Yeah. He can tell you what it came from oh, Dunkin' yeah. or Green oh, Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. I respect Blind that. I respect that. that. <laughs> little Keurig Does it all sword? taste like garbage? Yeah. <laughs> well, good. So, um, I love the simplicity of that, too. And I just, I love that you are a guy who uh, saw your dreams and just jumped into it and went for it. But I love that simplicity of, like, you're someone who is, like, Every day we wake up it says the miracle, and it's so true for us, like us workers. We wake up in the morning. The first thing we look forward to is a cup of coffee, and it's so it sounds so simple, but you take like this whole approach to it, like of like life in a cup, like legit. The people that make this all the way here to the first thing that you're excited about in the day, and then the rest of the day is set because you have that one beautiful cup of coffee. I just mm -hmm. love it. I think it's it, there's a romance in there that I definitely get the vibe from you that you <laughs> dance with. Yeah. Well, I think it's neat, too, yeah. how you, like, I feel very invested in this cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Like, very invested in it because you've told me the story about a family yep. who you shared a drink with at their farm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that just brings a human element to it that maybe yeah. we miss in the things that we consume every day. For sure. And especially because so many things are mass produced or mass consumed, right? I mean... When you get to the craft work of it, you know, I think about your story about necessity, creativity, drive, those things that were kind of built into your DNA as a kid and you saw it modeled in your dad and through your life to the work that you're doing here. I, I love that you're not settling mm -hmm. for something else. Now, you, you, we talk a little bit about, like, this is the land of, of coffee, right? I mean, Starbucks started an hour and a half down the road. There's a million mm -hmm. roasteries here in town. You know what? A lot of people would just say, well, there's enough coffee. I don't need to contribute my piece to it. Tell me, what are you contributing to it? Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> and it doesn't have to oh, be gosh. for the masses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean... In in my opinion, I mean, there's a lot of, and I don't I don't want to sound snobby or pretentious, but <laughs> there's a lot of uh, mediocre and bad coffee. Yes, in my opinion, and so I'm like, there's more than enough of that. I don't want to contribute to that. Yeah, <laughs> but something yeah. really excellent, which I'm like, I wish there was more for more around in our town, but also, you know, in our country, which there's there's a lot of really good stuff out there. But I'm like, I want to I want to contribute to that, and yeah. I'm freaking passionate about 
this craft, about what we do, about what we're able to produce and make. Um, and so that's that, that's what I'm contributing. And I also think that on, on top of that, I think there's unique ways that we can portray some of these stories of these farmers and producers and create like what like what you just said there is like you're like oh dang like now hearing a little bit of the backstory like this coffee yeah it feels a little different yeah it's like there's something different in my in my brain yeah when when you hear about that like yes. when i first went to guatemala and toured this farm where i literally bought this coffee from like coming back from there even for me, this coffee didn't taste the same. Yeah. Like if it felt, I was like, oh, I can just, I literally see the trails that we walk through. Wow. And yeah. throughout the coffee farm. And so I'm like, well, first off, there's a lot of mediocre coffee out there. And there's also not enough storytelling out there. Yeah. So how do we, how do we bring excellence and also bring that farm a little closer to people? Yeah. Now, do you have a vision for taking your film background and your passion there and your brother's passion in photography and kind of merging that with the coffee have you ever thought about doing those things together a hundred percent um i think the long-term goal is we want to literally shoot documentaries on these families that produce these coffees that grow these coffees and then literally um have them available for people to enjoy when they're drinking that coffee Mm so you'll be able to buy the coffee off the website and then literally right on the product page, you can sit down and watch like a 10, 20 minute documentary oh, on love that. the things this family is producing and experiencing. Um, yeah. The I think hands that touch these beans. You literally. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I think that may sound just bland for people, but to me, I'm like, Oh no, I would love that. Like if I could sit down yes. and see yeah. the story as I'm drinking this coffee. Yep. Yeah. That's fun. I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that gives. That's an experience that's missing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's an experience for sure. Yeah. I, I think th- about like as a craftsman, I think about all the things that I've built over the years and the hours that I've put into things and the stories that were told over them and the sweat and literal blood that was put into some of those. I don't craft a lot of things that you eat, by the way. It's all <laughs> wood. Um, but the blood that was shed for yeah. I'm like, yeah. There's a story in everything. Yeah. And being able to do that, that's a that's a fantastic vision. And I think I mean, I think that's that's storytelling in general. Yeah. And all every movie that you watch and every video that you watch, hopefully, and and literally this podcast. Mm-hmm. Like I literally came on, shared my experience, a little bit of my family's experience, and now, you know, X amount of people out there are gonna know my story. Yeah. And if you're still listening to this podcast right now, there's something intriguing about it that yeah. makes you want to keep listening to it. That's there's value there. Oh, absolutely. And so why not do that with people who are growing the stuff that you freaking cannot live without? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, you're like, but like every, every facet of like our day too, we just go. So we're so just like one track minded, you know what I mean? And then uh-huh. we just go, go, go. But like, yeah, to stop and sit down. If you had that at almost about like every little thing that you did and really thought about where it came from. You wouldn't get anything done. You, you wouldn't get <laughs> anything done for sure. But, You'd just be sitting there thinking. But it does make life freaking amazing. It, it does. does. It does. Like the gratitude that you've brought to this podcast that, that you've been talking about this whole time <laughs> is like, it, absolutely though, you know, the way it starts your day, you know, mm. if we brought that more to everything. There's even gratitude in the grind. Yeah, there is so yeah. much, so much so. Literally. 